guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a beautiful 16 by 20 inch gorgeous Sunrise Mountain version number four. They keep selling, so I'm gonna keep painting them. And you guys are obviously excited about painting this one. So check the description down below, find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, holy moly, I almost spilled this thing. So we're gonna put Bob Ross Liquid White on our canvas. Gonna show you how to do it. I shook up the lid. I shook up the jar, actually. Whatever got stuck to the jar, uh, to the top of the lid, is what we're going to use. We just can't even speak today. So most of you are going to fast forward through this part anyway. But for those who stick around and stay around and check it out, you just want a very, very, very small amount on your brush and then stretch it as far as you can stretch it. You don't want to have a whole lot on your brush because it's going to splatter everywhere. And you don't really want it to do that in your house, right? So... Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. And in the meantime, we're gonna fast forward and be like, and then we'll be back. And that just about does it, guys. You want it nice and thin and stretched. And then when you touch it, you'll have a little bit of a fingerprint. You can see all the little dimples in the canvas. Or in your case, if you're just painting with your fingers, you'll be able to see your fingerprint all throughout there. And you'll know you have too much if you glob it in there and, there's, and you can't see all those little ridges in your fingerprint. And that's pretty much it. Simple, easy, effective way to get our liquid white out of the canvas and get it ready to go, right? It's going to be a nice, simple, relaxing little evening, evening tonight. Especially if I can't even put a word or two together. Then it's really going to be fun, right? Let's see if we can get the jar off this other one. There we go. A little bit of liquid white for our highlights. Throw that old nasty jar off to the side. We're gonna wash this brush and then we're gonna get ready to go. We use odorless mineral spirits from Jasco or Clean Strip or two good brands you can use. And then we're gonna show you how to get them, how to get the jug open firstly. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so we're gonna pour that in just very lightly and you wanna have the can is very full, so you want to have something over the back of it to catch all those little drips. You can either use your beater bucket or, or another cup, something like that to catch the drips. And I like to do it over another cup, and that way you're not losing all of it, right? There we go, right in the thing. Got our two little jars. Fantastic, put our lid back on, we'll be all set to go. See what else can go wrong during this video. We'll see. Because I don't like to clip a lot of stuff together, as you'll see. The, uh, if this is your first Paint with Josh video, lucky for you, it's going to feel like I'm just hanging out in your painting room, in your living room, in your wherever you paint. Just hanging out, me and you. I'm not going to edit a lot of stuff out. I like to show you how to make mistakes and how to fix them. Because you're bound to make a mistake, right? I make mistakes all the time. All the time. Always dab it off on a paper towel. Basically what we're doing down on the bottom, out of frame here, is just hitting it on the edge of a, of a table down here. And look at all the color that comes out. Even though I've already done it, I'm still getting color to come out. And that's from the last time we used the brush. So never get it all out. All right, let's go crazy today. Everybody get out your old Dixie cup. You can see mine's gently used, slightly, right? We're gonna make a nice little sunrise. We're gonna redo another painting because it sold and it was just so gorgeous. Everybody loved it so much. We made prints of it and all sorts of things. So we're gonna take a little bit of our cad yellow right on the edge of a, of a fan brush so it doesn't get too big and it doesn't stretch too far, right? We're gonna to try to find a spot maybe right here in the center of the canvas, slightly up, off to the right hand side, and we're just gonna make a yellow line around that. You could use a filbert brush, you could use a fan brush. Doesn't need to be the same, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just need a little bit of color in there so we can drag it, right? We're gonna drag it into the center, keeping the center very, very, very white. It's a good little technique if you wanna keep the center very white. And as you can see, it's really hot. Up in the room where I'm painting, in the little studio here in our spare room of our house. Everyone's always like, oh, Josh, you're so successful. I mean, you know I just paint in the spare room of my house, right? It's not like a big studio. I'm not a, not a giant professional artist. 
Okay, we're gonna take a little one inch brush. We're gonna drag that color in just like a clock all the way into the center. And then the rest of it, we're gonna pull outwards, right? So we're gonna pull it into the center, leaving the center very white, coming in from every single angle there can possibly be. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? Cause we're gonna take this side and pull it out. And then we'll have this dead white center of our sunrise. And the more and more you go over it, the more and more it's going to change. And it's gonna become more and more and more and more and more yellow. So keep it very light, very light colored. Now, why don't we go into our bright red just a little bit. Actually, let's get a lot. Let's get a lot onto the brush. We're gonna start out here though, cause it's gonna to wanna to grow, okay? So let's give it a good area of white, a little buffer where it's able to grow into. And then it won't overtake all of our yellow. We leave that good sized white area around the side of it there. Same like we've been doing with those black canvases recently at the, at the events and different things. And on Sunday, we did one with a sky sort of similar. It's almost like a sunset sky just on a black canvas. So we're using less and less paint. Now, if we really want it to be really bright red in some areas, just add a little bit more of that red in there because every time you mix it, it's gonna, every time you brush anything, it's gonna mix with all that white paint that's in there, that liquid white that we put on. That's what allows all these colors to blend and turn into these beautiful little things all on their own. It's like the easy, it's the, it's the easy way of painting, the, the lazy man's way of painting. All right, we're gonna come out here again. This time we don't care if these blend too much, so we're gonna leave less of a white buffer area. Still gonna leave a little bit of a line in there, but we're gonna do less. Do less, it's one of our favorite movies, line from one of our favorite movies. Do less, do less. Here we go. Throw a little bit of our crimson up here. Love painting sunsets like this, it's fantastic. And then they'll all blend together. We'll be able to save all this beautiful color for our water reflections down around the bottom. It's gonna be great. And yours is gonna look a little different than mine, so don't worry, it's gonna be different. You're never gonna grab up the same exact amount of paint. It's always got the potential to be different than mine. And that's what's great about painting is it's never one solid thing. No one's ever like, this is the one way it should be, and that's it, and no one else can do anything about it. No, yours is gonna look one way, mine's gonna look one way, someone else is gonna look one way. And that's the fun part about painting. Okay, let's not over mix it. Let's come in, we're gonna grab a little bit of our Prussian blue, that darker blue color this time. Oh, look at the difference. It's like a dark bluish grayish color. Gotta cover our sides, always cover the sides. It always finishes your painting, even if it's just a base color of the sky, always cover the sides. And that way you can, you can hang it unframed. You don't have to spend money on a frame. And your customer doesn't have to do anything special, you know, if you're gonna sell your paintings, if you're lucky enough to sell them. Like some people have sent, uh, I've seen all the posts and all the sales everyone's doing of those American flag paintings, like Dave Mann, he's selling a bunch of them. I always encourage you guys to sell it. You don't have to change a single thing. I put them out online for free to show you cool ways you can do it. And a lot of people take it in their own way. And again, that's perfectly fine because it's going to be different, right? And theirs might be a little bit different than yours, might be a little different than mine, might be a little different than hers or his or them's or theirs, right? Let's see. I'm gonna finish the top later. Let's wash all the dark color off that brush. This is the first time we've washed the brush. If you go in that progression, you don't have to wash the brush. until you get to the blue section, right? Because now we've covered everything. And we're gonna go back to our, our two inch brush we haven't used. Nice, clean, dry brush. We put the initial liquid white on with this and then washed it and dabbed it off, right? We're gonna come in here to that soft white area in the center. And I don't wanna do too much. I wanna keep it very bright. Let's check this thing. What is this doing? There we go, now I can see what we're doing. We're going to pull some of that yellow out, but not try to get into the red. I don't want to touch the red too much because if I do, it's going to drop a big, hold huge bit of red into my yellow. And now once we're out here, we're going to very softly blend it in with that white layer. Try not to let it grow too close. Doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. Just very lightly dragging it in, dragging it in, dragging it in. Trying to get to that yellow spot right here without going too far. Right, you go too far, and then you lose that white area in your sky. 
right? Just like that, starting to turn really neat. It looks really cool based on these. And then we can always add clouds and all sorts of stuff. And you can sit and blend and blend and blend and blend until everything's perfect to ever, however you want it, right? Go across it like that. And, but we were using such little amount of paint that it doesn't matter what we do. Let's come into this crimson section. And just blend those crimsons and reds together. Gorgeous little thing coming this way. All right, coming down, almost like a clock, same way. We go here, we go straight down. If we're coming this way, we come from the side. So our, our strokes are angled like this for a reason. And we can drag that blue in as far as we want until we get to that kind of yellowy area. You wanna stay away from that, right? We give it just a little difference in color there, blends it out, changes it. And all of a sudden you have this sky from very bright to very dark, but sort of seamless, just like that. Always making it soft, that's what I call it. Just make it soft. Doesn't matter what it looks like. You don't wanna have big, hard streaks and stuff like that, just make it soft. And sometimes you gotta go wash your brush or you can switch to a, a clean, dry brush. All right, just go in there very softly until we have these cool, this very cool looking sky. Just like that kind of blends out very bright. Then we can add a whole bunch of clouds. It'll be fantastic. Even with the blue color that's on the brush. So they were like, oh, we need a little bit darker up in the top up here. I don't know why my easel doesn't want to hold the canvas today. Just a little bit like that. You can change it. Maybe there's a cloud that floated in over the top, right? It just changes the color just a little bit. And that way we'll have something to sit on top of that or below that or this or that. Do all sorts of things. So, like I said, it doesn't matter what yours looks like. You just want it to be nice and soft and an easy progression from light to dark without any real hard lines. And that is how you do the perfect sunset. Now let's wash these brushes off on our nice chill little evening. What is everyone up to today? Type it in the comments. What are, what are you doing tonight? What are your plans for later on? There we go, just right into the center. Blend all that color away, you get this super bright circle. But it's very bright in the center, kind of starts to fade out and fade out and fade out and start to feed our whole little thing back. And then we're gonna cover over these certain areas, probably put our mountain tip somewhere in there so it really stands out against that, that color back there. But in the meantime, let's take a little bit of our just a fan brush. We're gonna go over the top of this cloud right here, a little bit of white. Actually, we're gonna go on the underside because the cloud, the sun would be on the underside of this cloud. So just like a, just like we would do a little bit of grass or some tree branches, different things, just like that, very softly, very easily. And now we have a very bright bit of cloud underneath. And the more you want it to go away, just blend it, blend it, blend it, very soft. Swipes back and forth. You get this cool little bit of cloud back there. Very neat and easy, super easy, right? Now in this bright area, we don't wanna go super dark color for our shadow, so let's get a little bit of red. That's gonna mix in with the white that's already on our fan brush, right? All we need is the smallest little bit of color, just like this, and then we can come in and make our own little clouds, maybe another one across the sun. If this one's there, maybe this next one comes in, and it's like that. Now we don't know which, what to highlight, what to do, because it's sort of right in the center of the sun. So we can highlight it just like we normally would. It would be fantastic, cool little thing, just like that. You can take your one inch or two inch brush, whatever you wanna do, but just use the top couple bits, just the, just the few little bristles on it. You don't wanna blend out the whole thing. It's gonna to try to go very fast. So be very soft with it. Just like that and get this cool little cloud floater back there. Now we can switch fan brushes just because we don't wanna clean the other one because I'm lazy, right? Go into a white. Right here with our new fan brush, pop in a few more little bits, just like we would on trees, just pop it in. That's all you need, a little bit of random color back there. 
when we really need it. Then we can really blend it out and see what it looks like. Take our brushes very lightly, very, very, very light, very light. Like a whisper, so light, bam. You get these cool little things, almost like the sun is poking through the clouds. You don't know what's going on. It's kind of neat, especially when we throw a big mountain in front of it, right? You have to think about your whole scene. You not really focus on, you know, one thing for too long because you may end up covering that cloud. If we don't like it, we could cover the whole thing. Let's take a little bit of a, a white on our, on our liner brush, just like this. Go off into the distance. Come back one more time just to flatten it all out, make it a little bit more even. And then we'll take our brush just once or twice over it. That's really all you need, just to soften it enough. Just be soft enough. There we go. Just little differences, little colors, little things. And you gotta have it on a very slight little angle like that. Very cool. But it doesn't have enough clouds in it. I want, a, I want a few more. So let's take a few more of these. Maybe we'll pop in just a little bit of white in this random shape out here, right? Doesn't even all have to blend. Look at it, it's changing colors, all blending in with itself. And now we just don't want to over mix it. If you over mix it, you're going to lose all the white. You're going to lose all the differences in color. Everything's going to disappear. It's going to go away. Now you've got these very, very, very soft, very different, right? These are very different kind of clouds. They're soft, whiffs, wispy little things that are just out there. They don't really have a shadow to them. So they kind of pick up whatever is kind of behind them. It's very cool. All right, let's get the big knife out today because we're going to make big mountains. So let's get a big knife, scrape up some black, crimson, and blue. All together, my three favorite colors to make Josh's super shadow, right? <laughs> Are we really that lame that we're naming it like a super shadow? No, we're not going to do that. And with this one, let's add a little bit more crimson. I love a little bit more of a crimsony mountain, but you do have to mix it all up so it's not too much of one color. You don't want to be brushing it out and have crimson in this blue layer and a black layer. It's not really going to look the best. Okay, we're gonna scrape off the knife, scrape up this paint, wipe it off like that, come in, pull it down so we get a good little, just a little bead. We don't wanna have too much. And we don't wanna cover up too many of these clouds, right? But we do have to push them back. We have to lose a few. So do we start on this side? Do we start on this side? Let's go over here. Just straight up, right? It's gonna save a couple on the top and a couple over here just to push them back. Now, don't worry about what your mountain looks like down here. This is irrelevant. It doesn't matter what's going on down here. We're only worried about what this top line looks like. And as long as that's sort of filled in most of the way, there we go. And not just a perfectly straight line, then you're going to have a good looking mountain. Because they're really easy. The mountain is just a big mess, right? Watch, we're just going to make a mess. Just like that. Little fat little mess. Dump it in wherever we want. Now, let's decide... Yeah, we're gonna, cause we're gonna, no, we'll do it. We'll do them simultaneously. We'll go like this. All right, come over here. I told you we gotta push some of that mountain back. So uh, some of the sunrise and clouds back anyway. Just like that, kind of mushing it on, smushing it in, connects down here. You get this cool little piece of a mountain, pushes all those clouds, pushes the sunrise way off in the distance. And that's exactly what we want. All right, again, we don't wanna have very straight lines over here. So. Just like that. Now we're gonna come in with our brush. Take that brush, pull it out. Just like that. We're shaping what, our, what we want our mountain to look like. So as you get down to the bottom, you have to start to kind of pull everything out more at a flat angle versus anything else. Pull it out this way. And we got that whole really cool little piece of a mountain just from messing around. Pulling it in different angles and different shapes and looking back and going, oh, it would look really neat if there was like a little ridge right here that went down on the side or whatever, whatever happened. Look how it's like very bright up there. Very bright because it mixed in with that white from the clouds. It's kind of cool. And you can come over here and take this guy. Just start to pull it out, right? It's almost like it's missing a little bit. You're gonna get a little bit darker, a little bit more paint. Pull it down like that. Very cool. Very cool looking mountain. And all just from messing around. Look, we're not even gonna go to the edge. It's gonna disappear and become sort of the same color that it is down here anyway. All right, shaping it. What's their mountain gonna look like if it goes like this? You got this big old ridge in the top of it. All right, comes down, 
and shape it again. Just add different bits of color, more dark on one side than the other. We're gonna to start to see little things in our minds and then we're gonna go, oh, it's gonna look really cool if all that darkness came down this way. And then it had this little ridge that we can start to see forming. And then we'll change and when we highlight it and it'll look different than in what we had originally planned. But it's a cool little way to kind of build a mountain just out of your mind. Nice and soft, push that one off in the distance even just a little bit, right? Very cool. Now, the way that we can do that, even with that little bit of mist right there, is just make this more defined. We'll have this bit a little bit more defined, saving that very light area though. That's what we're trying to save in here. And I mean, this mountain on the left is in front of the mountain on the right, which is gonna push it back and help us keep this guy up here in the front. Everything is going to get darker as it comes towards us with its shadow, and then it's going to get brighter as it comes towards us with its highlights. It's Josh's paradox. That's how it goes. There we go, okay. Now we gotta take and shape this guy out a little bit. All right, pull him down, we got our, our little ridge that wants to grow to the side, and again, it doesn't really matter, it's just there for a little bit of shadow. We're gonna come down over here. Maybe these guys wanted to pull in front for a little. Like that, oh, that's kind of neat. It's like a little dragon ridge. The dragon's back back here. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull this guy to the edge just because the color is so dark against that brighter color. Take some of these dark areas, slide them down in each direction. And we got our own little cool little mountain ridge starting to form with this far off mountain back in the distance. Very, very, very cool. Very cool. Now let's decide. We have to make up a little bit of shadow color. So we use blue and white for our snowy highlight shadows, right? So we need to mix up a little bit of that. And you always need more white than you think you need because it just gets so dang, the blue is so powerful. A little bit of the dark color, mix it in there just so we have this little difference, right? We're gonna scrape up out of that, come over to our far away mountain, very lightly start putting in some highlights, and low lights, differences on each side of it, right? Because the sunlight is really behind this mountain. We're not gonna go down too far, not gonna worry about it. All right? Even kind of scraping it back there, just so it's less. Can't really tell what's happening, right? Way off in the distance. Now, since we're gonna highlight the, the mountain over here on the right-hand side, we gotta highlight this guy on the right-hand side. So we're gonna take a little bit more white, mix it in with this same color that we just made, so it's a little bit brighter, but it's not pure white. We have to save our pure whites for when they get closer to us. And even that's a little bit too white for where we wanna go. So let's darken it down, a little bit of that grayish snow. And it's gonna be a different color than what's up here. Very softly, just letting the knife pull what it wants to take, right? Shadow the rest. Everything else is in deep darkness down around the bottom, doesn't even finish it, right? Just like that, very cool, very cool little thing. You can take, maybe get a little bit of sunshine way off on that peak back there, just the smallest bit. Maybe there's a little, which side did I use? There we go. It's got the white paint on it. Just a little bit of brightness on our ridge back there. That's all. Just for a little difference. Okay, now we're gonna take a little bit more blue. Not a whole lot, because it's so powerful, you guys. It really is. Scrape up some more of that white, make it up in here so it's a little bit bluer than our color was back here, right? That way it's gonna indicate that this, the shadows are a little bit closer, a little bit darker, to me anyway, that's what it's gonna say. I'm gonna pull it off down in the direction, however you want your mountain to start looking. These deep, dark shadows that live way back here, the sun can't reach all the way back there. All right, maybe this guy is like straight down. If we can get enough paint on the knife, there we go. Pull it straight down, it cuts this there's a cliff back there. Very cool, like a very sharp ridge. All right, this guy, same thing. Just line up your knife and then pull it straight down. However the ridge is shaped, and then pull it down. And you'll see these really cool things start to happen. Line it up over here. Pull it down, right? You get these very cool little breaks. And it's just having that little roll, and then you're, you're pulling it in a direction that it, it has to come off. And by the time you hear that, you know you're out of paint. You need to go back and get some more. Now, let's go back here. 
Let's grab up a little bit more of that white, mix it in with that little bit of light blue color that we had, just again, so it's not pure white, but it is very, very, very bright. We're gonna come in here just like this, just let it fall, drag all those bits. Maybe they came down, they hit a ridge like that, they start to fall this way. Very cool. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight, right? You can always come down different ways, take a little bit of that white, pull it off to the side like this light trying to reach way back there. There's a little bit of light that got over onto that ridge. Don't want to have it too straight of an angle though. All right, very cool little thing. This stuff's going to all turn into fog down here. So we don't have to worry really about what it's going to be. Now let's go over here. Got to highlight just a little half of this guy. Pulling it down just like that. Very cool. All right. Taking it, pulling it down, saving these deep, dark areas because that's what we need to save there. We painted this nice dark bit of a mountain for a reason. It's got to be saved. Oh, the Dragon's Ridge. See, all this deep, dark shadow, you don't even have to cover. You want it there. You want it to be there. It's providing all these really cool things for us. Now, we got to come back here and let's throw in more of our... Our little slide, our little ridge down the edge. We can do all sorts of stuff with that thing, but I mean, how much time do you got really, right? Just like that, bringing it around, sliding it down, letting it break. When you know it's, when you hear that sound, you know it's empty. Come back in, scrape up a little bit more. Let's see, maybe it's starting to pile up back here. All right, big old bit of pile up happened. Start to come down, that looks better right there. Very cool, this thing needs just a little bit of something. There we go, just a little bit, just to change it. Got our ridge, it continues off down here. All gonna be covered in fog and stuff, so we don't have to worry about it. You can always go back and put your little blue shadows in. But just like that, very neatly, we've done a mountain in just a few minutes. Add our little bit of ridging in here, a little highlight there. All right, got to have some, some shadow. You have to save some little bits of shadow in there. Don't lose them all. All right, this guy, his whole thing is going to be lit up like that. And you see how we're pulling off to the side? We're changing the angles. We're doing all sorts of things. All sorts. It's not just one direction that you hold the thing. That's for sure. Don't just want to be holding it one way and that's it, just like a robot. No, you gotta rotate. You gotta have some movement in there. Even just by putting a little bit of that straight white just onto the canvas, it again adds like a little bit down around the bottom, a little meadow, a little something. And if we don't use it for that, we can always use it to make fog out of, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, darling. All right, and the areas where we pulled straight down, I'm going straight up. The areas that we went at an angle, we're going at an angle. You don't have to go all the way to the top of your mountain, but the higher you go up, the more it's going to soften it, and the further away it's going to look because of that softness. Right, just from dragging it up, we don't have to do much else than that, even with the shadows. You can always make it darker down here if you wanted to. You could take a little bit of that original color that we made it out of and start to add in some real deep, dark shadows back in here. And then as we fade those out, our shadow will become much deeper and darker back here. Just by pulling it, doing different things, adding differences, adding depth to the mountain. In the real deep, dark areas, we can add a little bit of that real dark black color. It right? just gives it a lot more depth and distance. That's why we leave a lot of this stuff empty as well, because we don't want it to, we don't want to have to stack these paint on top of paint on top of paint, right? It starts to become taxing and difficult. And we got a little bit off the back over here. Just a little bit, and it doesn't have to be everywhere. And just like that, you got a very cool little mountain. Very cool. And you don't want it to be too thick, especially. That black can be thick, it can change your whole world up. And you can always go back in with the blue and everything and just dump on little bits. Maybe the sun's hitting little different areas back there. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right, now again, we're gonna, since we came down this way, we're gonna soften it by going up that way. Right, we can take it and really make it foggy down here around the bottom. 
just by using the front corner, the top bristles, just the littlest bits. These guys got a little, a little crazy there, a little shadowy. See, we can take and mix that, blend it, tap it, bring down that color, just make it like foggy, like we can't really tell what's going on. You can always do the little circly technique, right? Bingo, bango. We got a very cool, soft little bit of mountain back here. Looks like it's just floating on a cloud. Very neat. Now, now we can decide where we want to go, what else we want to do with the rest of our scene, and everything else, all based off of our mountain. We got to bring our darkness just a little bit further down here. There we go. Just like that. Makes it look even cooler. Bam. And brings it down to about a level distance, which is what we're looking for. Let's wash these brushes. dark area it keeps annoying me just every time I look at it. All right, let's take a little bit more snow because we need some more bits of snow in here. Just scrub them in. And I have a little bit of land in front of our mountains, right? Just scrub it in. Add some white. You think you need some white areas? Add some whiter areas. Keep our snow nice and thick, bringing it down to where our, wherever our, the bottom of our mountain ends up to be. Now again, we'll take that make it nice and soft, and then we can start to maybe break off and, and decide. Ooh, that might even look like a little bit of water with a little sheen on it back there. That's very cool, see that? Do you see? There we go. So now, all of a sudden, now we've created a little lake kind of rests at the edge, that mountain back there. Very cool little thing. All sorts of stuff we could do too. All sorts of ways you could go, things you could do, just with the drop of a hat, right? So what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Let's save some of this, all this pink, we're gonna try to save, and then we'll throw a little bit of bush, a couple trees in the front, and we'll have that water distance back there. And that sounds like a cool plan. So take a little bit of darkness, the smallest little bit you can get, decide where your, your land is way off in the distance, right? Just the smallest little bit of dark. That's all we need. It's like a just a little bit of a little bit of shoreline way back there. We don't know if it's a shadow or if it's trees or foliage or what it is, because it's so dang far away, you just can't really tell. There we go. It doesn't really matter that it messes in over here. It's alright. We can always change it. Boom, just like that. Very thin, very soft. So if you have to push it harder to make it go away, that's what you gotta do. Poof. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's bring, let's get all that beautiful orangey uh, cloud color off of the brush here. Clouds look fantastic in this one. Now we're gonna mix up again a bit of our black, crimson and blue, all together into this gross pile, just like we did with the mountain. We're gonna end up needing a lot of this paint. <clears throat> now let's create a little bit of foreground for us, very simply and easily. We're gonna push all these mountains and water so far away. Are you ready? Just by doing this, saving all this empty space that we saved on the side. Let's go a little bit of tree, just like this, all the way down past our waterline, boom, right down into the foreground right here. Take the edge of the brush, tap up very softly, just dropping little teeny tiny things, right? Just spreading them out until they start to look like a tree. Little teeny tiny bounces, shaping it each time, right? Leaving little fingers of paint, little grabbers that are out there going, please, Take me with you. Just like that, right? Cool little thing. Doesn't even have to connect. Really doesn't. 
and you know it doesn't have to be a perfect thing you could skip an area you could have an area that's free of of uh leaves or you have an open area of your trunk all sorts of stuff very dark they'll keep it very dark don't want to see anything else past there this is okay still provides a lot of depth back there and like i said we're gonna need a whole lot of this color so might as well mix up a bunch while we're here right i love doing little wintry scenes like this they're fantastic they're easy simple to do effective a lot of depth in them and we get it done in about, about 45 minutes, right? Or however long this took. I don't even know. How long did it take? You guys know. I don't know. Now, I don't ever like going over the tip top of a mountain, right? That's like, oh, why would you do that? Oh, don't go over the tip top. And you always want to stay away from areas that have a lot of thick white paint behind there. So it's, it's very easy to, to kind of select where you put your, your items. And then you can keep, you know, you keep them looking good. Because when you try to mush all that thick paint over all that thick paint, it's very difficult. It doesn't want to play ball. It's like, no, it's too much. I'm not going to do it. And then all of this white paint starts getting attached to your brush. And you're like, why doesn't this work? I don't understand. What? It's because it's too thick. So choose a different area for your tree next time, right? And it'll be much, much better of a result just based on where you place it. Right? So we still have a little bit of distance back there. You can place them wherever you want to put them, but be mindful not to go over areas where they're too thick because then it's going to become more and more and more difficult. Then we can start to, actually, let's put a little, couple little bushes down here. A couple little bushes. Pull with our, our little bush making brush, the half round, in one direction down. See how we're doing it? Pulling it down. Then we're going to rotate over. Come in here and let's pop in a couple little bits. Look at those fantastic little things. They're not even connected to the actual bush itself, right? But it's so fantastic. Like those, just those little details all from one little pop. And that's what I love about this painting technique is you, you, you kind of go based off what it looks like, right? Okay, well, maybe there's a couple more of those little guys and they lived over here. And fill in the rest with all these little bottom bits of our, of our uh, bushes, right? And at the very bottom, where are they gonna be? They're gonna be the darkest at the very bottom. So we gotta have all that dark paint, cover up all that blue, keep it nice and dark, brings everything in the foreground, right? Now on some of these, you can start to decide, maybe there's a little bit of, of land, maybe underneath, just a couple. Don't wanna go too far, right? A Little bit of land underneath there. And pull it out, it'll eventually meet our water or other piece of land. And look at that beautiful sunrise. All the color caught in there, it's fantastic. Brings all the stuff to the foreground, but you don't wanna leave this bit empty. Even though you're, you might be like, oh man, mine looks really great right now and I don't wanna continue. It's only one or two or three more trees, that's all. <laughs> Nothing too crazy, right? Nothing too nuts. Even a little bit of finger painting, watch this. Oh, it's amazing. Just one more little piece of detail. One more piece of detail. There we go. All right, now we got to decide what's going to live on this side. I want a couple different trees. We don't need to make them all evergreen trees, right? And then we can go back and highlight all these beautiful bushes, add a little bit of snow, and we'll have our little river. It's going to be great. Take a little bit of that dark again. Maybe decide that the new horizon line is down around here on this guy, right? So we have this rounded little piece, and that pushes that far shoreline off into the distance. Okay, again, very lightly. All we need is that little bit of darkness. Don't overdo it and mix in with your pink and lose it, right? It's okay if it's a little rough like that because we're going to come in over the top and take a little bit of our white. This one back there is so far away, it doesn't really need a water line. We can't really see it. But this guy right here, a little bit of water. Ooh, see? Fantastic. Right over the top of our little dark line. That's all we need to do. Boom. You want it to be messy like that, too. Don't even mess around with it. Maybe put in, you want more? Put in a little wave right here, too. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. Take a clean brush with no other color on it. Very softly. One or two times, that's it. You get this very far away little bit of water line. A little bit of wave in our water over here. Very cool. Very cool. 
I love those colors back there, they're fantastic. And we have to save this area where it goes from pink to blue, just like it is up here, right? See how this color matched? So we gotta save some of that. So let's add in the tree over here. Gonna go back to our fan brush. Gonna go over here to that thick paint. Pull it down, get it nice and nasty onto our brush. And let's save the skinny tree actually for over here. So let's do another pine tree. And this one's gonna be almost as tall as the mountain, but kind of thin and scrawny, right? Doesn't have to be super thick. Now with this other guy, all right, if he's gonna come out to about there, why don't we put this other guy right here in the shadow of the, the thing? Boom, down about the same, right? You see where we're going here? Just fill it in, it's so fun to sit and go, I could make all these little skinny trees, we could do one big giant tree that goes from the top that you can't even see the top of. All sorts of little things you can do and just make fun, you know what I mean? Just have a blast. That's the real joy of painting is, is having a lot of fun doing these things. Okay, now like we're gonna have to cut through our, our thing and our chemtrail way up top. Boom, that just pushes everything else so far away. All right, fill it in. It's gotta get a little thicker down around the bottom anyway. Just like that. You get this cool little bit of a tree that's gonna live somewhere over here. Now, we need to go back and fill in, fill in our trees on this side, right? A little bit just like this, the same way. I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way on each camera. It's trying to work both sides. Right, just fill in all that space, right? Fill it in. Keep going until you're done. Fill, 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 fill. All we're trying to do is save the smallest little bit of that little blue area back there, right? And again, you want it to be really thick. You gotta have those little fingers that are kind of waiting for something. They're waiting to pick up that highlight. They're like, hey buddy, what's up friend? Uh, you been waiting for me? It's really gonna stand out and push those things back too. It's fantastic. This guy got stepped on by a moose, obviously. When he was just a baby, he got stepped on by a moose. Really, and the more and more you go down, the harder and harder you push to extend your trunk, right? You push more of the, of the brush against the canvas. Okay, last little bit of this tree over here. Blue, crimson, and black all on the brush at the same time. And just come in and tap. All right, rotate, flip the brush over. Come back, tap again. Just filling it all in. That's what we're trying to do, block out all that color. Don't want to see anything go through the branches. That's for the edges out here where you can see stuff through your branches. Don't want to see a much of the background when we're doing these very frontal foreground trees, right? Scoop up all that paint nice and thick and nasty. So we have these nice, thick, nasty little fingers that are reaching out to grab our highlights. All these little like stalactites and stalagmites that are like, hey, give us some color too. Very thick. Very thick. And then they're gonna suck the highlight color just straight off of the brush. Filling all that in. And then we can pull out the bottom of them down around the knee. It's gonna be so sweet. Ready? Just like this. This guy. It's kind of hard to tell where he lives. There we go. These guys we can pull down. Just like that, start to shape what our end, what our land looks like down around the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. A couple little pulls, all set to go. It's like a little pathway that leads down to the down to the shore. Take a little bit of our white snow, pull it out just like that. Yeah, very cool little thing. Grab up a little bit of that dark color with it, you get a little bit of shadowing into our snow as well. Very cool. All right, come over to this other side. Maybe this guy's in the shadow of that side, so we'll use like a little bit darker stuff that's already been kind of mixed in and used already. Cool little area over here. Take our brush very, very, very lightly because we don't want to overdo it and ruin all those cool little breaks. But we gotta make it soft, very lightly. 
This guy we can push a little bit harder, kind of stretch him a little bit further. Just like that, we got a cool little snow covered path back here. Very cool. All right, let's take our, uh, our liner brush into the paint thinner, into where our dark color is. Got to get all that dark color, get some of the brown too. And you can tell I'm trying to hold the palette down so all this stuff doesn't run off of my, my palette and onto the floor. I just want to have a lot of paint thinner though. Go back to the cup. I was going to tell myself, go back to the cup, get more. You want it to be like water. Really want it to be like water. There we go. Remember, if your branch goes out kind of far, you got to have it thick right here. So extend that, make it a little bit thicker where it connects. You can always adjust the tree, making it slightly bigger. Now stay away from this area where all the snow is, right? Maybe take our last guy, really go back, scrape it up, make sure it's very thin and just get him through that snow. You don't want it to, you don't want to hang around in this snowy area. It takes a lot of time. There we go. Just very lightly. Just so long as it attaches, doesn't blend in with all that white and doesn't like lose itself. There we go. Boom. That's all we really need. You can always throw one off down around the bottom where there's not a bunch of snow down here. A little thicker one or thinner, depending on what you want to do. If that goes off this way, maybe it shoots out there. Maybe there's a branch that curves off around that side. All sorts of things. Or this guy goes, right? They don't all have to be the same straight line things. And this is my favorite guy from the center of the tree out because he always comes and pokes me. Anytime I'm walking by, it's like he reaches out and uh, just gives me a little nudge. And I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. Maybe this guy got busted off. A little bit of a tree branch that got all broke. Just because I don't want to go through all that thick mountainy tree stuff. There we go. This. Just like that. That's a cool looking tree. Hard to do it with a with a liner brush like that for sure. Maybe he needs one more little guy that went off this way. It's part of this nice thick chunk that was in the tree over here, made it nice and thick. Little things coming off. There we go. Little branches, very cool. I love painting nice old dead trees. It's kind of a paradox, a nice old dead tree. All right, let's wash all the dark color off these brushes because I don't think we need any more dark. As long as we don't cover up all of our light, all of our dark, we won't need any more. Now, I'm gonna switch to a, a Nick Pro fan brush. It's a micro fan brush. They're very soft, very small. This is a size four. I just got it out the pack. I'm not sure if they make Nick Pro anymore. Like, it seemed like I couldn't find them the last time I looked. So I was lucky that I had ordered two, but you know what I mean. All right, let's take a little bit of the smallest little touch of blue. Get it, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Little teeny as big, because we don't want it to be pure white, obviously. And we can always brighten it up as well. But we need to put a little bit of color to it. Just can't be all super bright white. A little bit more liquid white, and look at that. That's the kind of sky blue color that we're going for. Take our, uh, you know what? I got it out. I might as well use it. Let's get our brown because we got it out. Guys. Might as well use that. There we go. Mix the brown in with the white, but don't over mix it. Come in and just in the area of where our trunk is in different places. You don't want them in the same places and you can cover up the areas that you don't like. But we might as well throw a little trunk and as you cover over them, you'll notice that you don't get them all, and then you see right through some of them, and you go, ah, that's what's holding up this big tree. I got it, I got it. There we go. And it gives them a little bit of like actual thick texture to it as well. Let's go on this side. Add in a little bit of that brownish color to the back of our tree, because the front is gonna be a little bit of white. So try not to cover up all the dark. We don't need to cover it all up. And as the higher you go, 
the less and less brown you have to see in the more and more. You know what, that looks really neat like that. It's very neat. Let's take a little bit of that white, mix it in with that brown, just so it's a little brighter than this side is. Yeah, baby, but you still got that little brown tint to it. And just drag that guy until you can't even drag it anymore. Little teeny tiny touches and then you pull away. Touch and pull away. That's all you really need in order to create that real kind of bark feel and look to it. Kind of pull it over, make it nice and neat like that. Very, very cool. Let's see if we can't create that with a little bit of liquid white into our brown. Don't want to go too brown or too white and go along the tops of our branches with that same brown color. Not everything has to be high lit, remember. The sun's not going to touch everywhere. So, but it does have to be a little bit bright, a little bit dark in, in all the places. It can't all be the same color. Someone's going to look at it and go, yeah, that's okay, but they didn't really highlight this. It's just a, it's just a silhouette. All right, so we come in with our highlight color and we highlight it. Very lightly though. It doesn't have to be all the same color. It's called a highlight because we're only highlighting a few pieces of it versus its whole dark self. Then it no longer becomes a highlight. It's just all of a silhouette again, like I just said. There we go. Very cool. You don't have to touch everything. You don't have to go too far. You don't have to do anything. Very cool little thing. All right, let's take these guys. We got our brush out that's got the baby blue colored paint on it right here with the liquid white. I'm gonna come up, we're gonna touch, and then we're just gonna go over the top of some of those shadows. Don't have to touch all of them. I'm not trying to cover up everything, right? Cool little bits, all, and down around the bottom, you really don't even need to go down so far. It's really not a requirement to go down that far. And on the back side, you don't even have to cover all of it either. That's the best part. You got to leave some of those shadowy areas. And if you don't, it's not going to look right. Come up here. Tap, 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 tap. Moving down, kind of moving all over. Tapping in different places. Pushing harder in some places, less in other places. Just like that. Very cool little way to get it done and highlight our trees. Now, since we did these guys on this side, we're going to do these guys on this side because they're sort of on either side of the sunlight there. Get the color out of that brush. Just like so. A little bit more white over here into our pile with the baby blue. Very, very, very light baby blue. All right, come up. We got our trunk. Start tapping at it. And then the more and more we go down, the more and more you tap, more pressure anyway, and that'll fill in the rest of those branches, right? Get our little sharp edges out on the edge. Bam. Boom. One too many times and it's not going to look right, so be careful how you do it. Don't want to highlight it all, but it doesn't all have to be super, you know, one side versus the other either. So get all the color off that brush again because we want it to be white, or at least in this case, baby blue. This little baby blue color, baby. A little bit more liquid white. Just on the edges of the brush. Don't have to want it to don't want it to go up all the way. Just on the edges, right? Go up here, tap the side of our trunk, and then stay on the right hand side. Just kind of going down in a little Z shape. Is really all it is. Right? On a little angle. And down around the bottom, they don't have to be so super bright. No one's really looking all the way down there. All right, kind of mix up our middle and our left hand side. So we have these cool little things. That was just too perfect for me. I didn't like it. There we go. Very cool. Again, never has to be perfect. Doesn't even have to be high lit all the way around the bottom. If you have a couple little sneakers that decide to come out over there, that's fine. Now we can take our, uh, because we're on a white canvas and we have all this beautiful white color underneath, we can take our brush or a knife, kind of scrape out. Oh, look, it's all these little blue sticks because there's blue underneath over here. Fantastic. A little frozen blue sticks in there. Right? Take all those. It doesn't even matter where you put them. 
Because watch, you can literally get rid of them all, right? If you didn't like them, you're like, yeah, I didn't really like how I wanted it to look. Just take the guys that you don't like, swipe them away. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Now you got all these cool little things, especially inside all these little uh, bushes. You got all these little dark areas for little stems and all the stuff that's holding up all these things, right? Give ourselves a, an idea for when we go back in with the half round brush that we're about to use and clean. All right, got that one nice and clean. We're gonna come in with that liquid white again, back into that baby blue. Just like this, pulling it down one direction. All right, one direction, one direction. Flip it over, come back, start popping in little things on top of our little sticks. Some of them, of course, you can cover. Doesn't matter, they don't all have to be highlight. Remember, turn it over again, go back through the paint, flip it back over, pop in just a few little things just back in there. Fantastic, you can add even a couple in over here. Doesn't even matter. Cool little flowers that got frozen in a, in a spring storm. Fantastic. Then like I said, whatever we don't like, we make go away. And just like that, that's really dark, so I'm gonna pull it in the other direction too. Just like that, we got a very cool little scene in just a few minutes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Always gotta cover our edges. Kind of blend them together. Now for this one, <clears throat> I wonder if you're ever like, I wonder how he finishes the top because my easel covers it, right? So we're gonna take it off. We're gonna bring it down here. And then we're gonna go over it with that same kind of purpley color. It needs a little bit of liquid white though. Help it move, right? You have to prep the canvas with, the, even the sides with liquid white if you want it to blend and be like liquid white when we go to cover it, right? Very gently holding the sides. Very gently. Try not to put too much pressure on. There we go. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, goodness. There it almost went. And I'm trying not to come down into the scene that has all that beautiful. Oh, look at this. Look at this, guys. This is not how we put out product, Josh. There we go. All right, let's mix all that stuff in. Bam, 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 bam. Making it nice and soft. Poof, and now we have a beautiful sunset painting all the way around. Let's not even put it all the way back in. Because if we do that, it's gonna leave a mark on the top of the canvas and we'll just have to repaint it again. So, let's see. I'm sure you're all screaming. Where's the family? Add the family, right? So let's add the family in without having the canvas come out at us because that would be bad. That would be very, very bad. There we go. Get some more liquid clear. Or uh, paint thinner, anyway. Yeah, I'm just all over the place. I can't. Even, I hope you guys have been able to follow this tutorial. I've, I've probably said every single thing incorrectly. So if I have, I'm sorry. Let's see. Just like that, the family goes in, and we're off and flying, baby. It's like way too big. You know what's cool about these? Because we use that low odor mineral spirits when we put them on there, it blends so easily. That's our paint thinner, you know what I mean? It blends away and then you can come back. You want it to be dry though. So blend it out, become nice and soft. All right, throughout our whole thing. And you don't want to have it be too wet going back up there. We move anyway, we'll come over a little bit. There we go. It's not bad for the family. Let's add the signature and then we'll be all done. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for watching, for trying this one, for sending it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. 
because that's where everyone sends them, and I love seeing everyone's stuff. And as always, please tag me when you go to post it by typing the at symbol on your computer, that little at symbol, and then you type paint with Josh and a list will come up and you select me from the list. So this one just came out fantastic though. I love how it looks. Very cool. You can go over the signature just a little bit because it was just not bright enough back here. It's like it got too dark. Swipe up from the bottom so you don't drag it too far. Leave an area where we can now come back in and add in the signature. How many times does it take you guys to do your signature? Because like sometimes it takes me three, four times to still be upset with it. Like this is too big. Like when has my signature ever been that big? No one knows. It's gonna be part of the bloopers. Oh, that's better. That's very small. That's better. Yes. I like that. Me over here worrying about having a perfect thing. I'm the I'm the painter that's like, don't worry about it. Just let it hang, you know, just let it fly. Do whatever. And then when it comes down to my signature, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get it right. Like if we put we put just a little dab of darkness over there and then a little dab of highlight. It might look like there's a bush on that side too. That's kind of cool. Again, you don't have to cover everything, so don't do it. Leave those nice, deep, dark shadows in there. It's fantastic. They always end up looking better when you kind of rush it and don't overdo it, right? Let's see. Always got to have a couple little additions. I always see something, I'm like, ah, that doesn't look right, or that doesn't look too good, or too bad, or whatever. There we go. That's not bad. That's not bad. A little bit deeper, darker color. And we should be fine. deep dark black. Gives it a nice little bit of a change. And then we can go out and just fill out the rest of our little branches like that. Very cool. You run out of liquid white so dang fast when you do these things. Like it wants to blend in so quickly. So be careful. So until then we're going to wash the brushes. You guys take care. Hey guys, it's Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch gorgeous sunset. Don't need to have a whole huge amount. You don't want to have it. The dangers of painting. <laughs> like I said, hey guys, <laughs> you guys are obviously excited about painting this one. It's slightly different than the rest. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch beautiful sunrise mountain. Gorgeous, beautiful. How many times can we say them both? Oh my goodness. I thought I was gonna get away without having bloopers, but I'm not. I got so many bloopers. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not. Funny. It's not. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. The bloopers. Oh my god. It's not even fun anymore. This one turned out fantastic. You guys obviously think so. That's why you check the link. You want to do it. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. Yeah. Yeah.